And a very warm welcome to the English Reformed Church here in Amsterdam. Whether you might be visiting us or are a regular visitor or found your way back after a long time, we are happy that you're here. And for those who are following us online through the live stream, uh, we welcome you as well and hope to see you maybe back in church one day. We actually have quite a full church today. It's really nice to see. Um, today we um, will celebrate communion, um, our monthly all age service and the celebration of the Lord's Supper. We share in the Lord's Supper as disciples of Jesus, the church, Christ's body. And all who are baptized and all who are drawn to Jesus as Savior are welcome to partake. Children are also welcome to take communion at their parents' discretion. Gluten-free bread will be available, and we also have alcohol-free wine. I will be dispensing that, so if you prefer this, please raise your hand as I come by. In your um, litur liturgy sheet, you can see some announcements of things that are happening this week and next week and other things coming up. I wanted to draw your attention that the 20s and 30s group are resuming for lunch today. So if you're in that age bracket, you can come see me after the service and we'll head over for lunch. Um, and also I want to share that um, on October 8th, we will have our Melange Mission concert, uh, fundraising concert here in the church. Um, in the back, when you leave, you can get a flyer with more information and you can also find the information in your sheet and on the website where you can also find the link to get your tickets and we hope you come and support the Melanchi Mission Hospital. I think that was it. <laughs> uh, you can stay after the service for some coffee and tea over there and we uh, hope you have a good service. Thank you, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's nice to see so, uh, so many of you here today. We hope you enjoy our time of worship. Um, we're going to start um, by, with our um, call to worship. You'll see that on, on the sheet, and your part is in the, in the bold, and then we'll stay standing for our first hymn. So let's stand for the call to worship. Blessed be the Lord. The Lord is my strength and my shield. So I am helped and my heart exalts. Let's sing together hymn number 132, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. One, three, two.
now turn to prayer, and I invite you to join in with me at the end with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. How wonderful is your creation. You have made everything there is, and you have made it out of nothing. There is none like you. You are the Lord of heaven and earth. You made the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. You set the moon and the stars in their places. You created the sun which shines in us this day and brings us warmth. You created each one of us, Lord, in your own likeness, making us just a little lower than yourself. Lord, you love each one of us so much that you sent your only Son, Jesus, to save us, to rescue us, to bring us back to you. Lord God, we cannot live without you. Help us to show you our thanks this day in our praise and in our worship. May we tell you just how much you mean to us, thanking you for all that you have done and continue to do in our lives and in this world. Father, forgive us. Forgive us for the times that we have failed to worship you as we should and have missed out. Let us learn from the mistakes that we have made, knowing that not only have you forgiven us, but you have chosen to forget all about them. Help each one of us, Lord, to forgive others as we have been forgiven by you. Help us to listen to your Holy Spirit within us as you seek to guide us through life. Help us, Lord, to continue to encourage each other in our faith, to build each other up, and to pray for those that you bring to our minds. And Lord, hear us as we pray together in the words which Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, we've got some children today. Would you like to come, come forward, have a seat? Up the back as well, yeah. You can, you can bring dad or mum or whatever. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. Who have we got here? What's your name? Sophie. Sophie. Elisa. Elisa, right. Lucien. Lucien. Sophie, Elisa, Lucien. Right. Now... Um, oh, we've got a late comer coming. And what's your name? Berwin. Berwin. Ber Berwin. Berwin. Right. Okay. Right. That's great. It's nice to have so many here. Right. Now, can you tell me, um, do you have a king in this country? You sure? Right. Uh, what's his name? Shh, no prompting. <laughs> right, I'll give, you, I'll, give you some, I'll give you some clues. Is it Fred? No. Is it James? Is it William Alexander? Yeah. <laughs> right, well done. And does he have one of these? I think so. Right, would you like to be king? Right, there we go. It'd be nice being king, wouldn't it? We'll give you a special throne. Right, do you know how, how they decide who's going to be king? No, I'm not quite sure. I think it comes uh, after you've got to be born into the, the, roy the royal family. Um, but I'm going to tell you a story today about um, how a king was appointed in the Bible. Now... The story starts with a man called Samuel. Now, Samuel 
um, God told Samuel to go and appoint a new king because the last king, he, was, he wasn't good at all. He was pretty rubbish, the last king. He kept doing wrong things. And, uh, so God says, right, I've had enough. There's going to be a new king. And he said to Samuel, I want you to go to Bethlehem. Now remember, Bethlehem much, much later on was where Jesus was born. I want you to go to Bethlehem and find the family of a man called Jesse. Find that family and get him to bring you all his sons. And then I'll tell you, God said to Samuel, which one is going to be the king. So Samuel traveled down to, to Bethlehem. He met Jesse and all the people. And he said, Jesse, right, line up all your sons. And so Jesse got his sons of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the sons. And he said, um, Samuel, God told him, uh, God told Samuel, go and look at each one of them and I'll tell you which one is going to be the king. So Samuel looked at the, f the first um, son, I think he was called Eliab. And he said, um, he looked at him, he thought, this is a very big, strong man. He's really strong. This is going to definitely going to be the king. But God said to Samuel, no, don't look on, on how tall he is or how strong he is, but look at something else. So Samuel said, right. He went to the next one, uh, Benadab, and he said, he thought, this is, this is certainly going to be the king. But God said to Samuel, no, not him. The next one, Shammah, he said, I think this is definitely going to be the king. No, God said, the next one, the next one, the next one, and the next one, all seven. And God said, no, none of them are going to be the king. So Samuel said, well, there's something strong, something strange here, because God, you told me to come and see all of Jesse's sons, and one of them would be king. And God said, well, ask Jesse if he's any more sons. He said, Samuel said to Jesse, have you any more sons? And Samuel, um, Jesse said, well, this, this, this little David, but he's, he's out looking after the sheep. He doesn't, doesn't really count. Uh, Samuel says, bring him to me. And as soon as Samuel saw David, God said, this is the one. This is the one who's going to be king. I want you to anoint him. And that meant pouring over some oil over their heads because that was the way they did it before he got the crown later on. He poured the oil over um, uh, the head of David because he was going to be the king in due course after a wee, a wee while. And God said to Samuel, don't look at how strong or how big people are, but look inside, look at the heart. And I know that this little boy, David, who was going on to do great things, because remember, David was the one that faced the giant Goliath, um, and he became king um, and did wonderful special things and wrote a lot of the Psalms as well. Look at what's inside, and that's very important. It doesn't matter how small you are, how big you are, how middle sized you are, God looks at what's inside each one of us. And he knew that David was the right one to be king and to look after his people. Shall we have a wee prayer together? Father God, we thank you for the story of how David was anointed with oil as king by Samuel, and how God spoke to Samuel, and he was able to, to choose the one that God himself had chosen. Help us, Lord, not to look at others about what's outside, but what is inside and in their hearts, and help us to be good and to follow you and your ways this day and always. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right. Well, I take my crown back. Thank you very much. Would you like to go back and, and join your, your families? Thank you so much. That was great. Our first reading today comes from the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 21, verses 12 to 17. You will find this in the New Testament section of your pew Bible on page 22, verse 12. Then Jesus entered the, the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers 
and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became angry and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read, Out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself? He left them, went out of the city to Bethany, and spent the night there. Here ends the first reading. Our second reading today is Psalm 8. You will find this in the Old Testament section of your Pew Bible on page 503. O Lord, our Sovereign, 
How majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Here ends the second reading. Thank you, Dean. May God bless to us these readings from His Holy Word. To His name be all the glory and the praise. I'm going to sing now, just echoing uh, those words from Psalm 8 in our hymn, uh, hymn number four. How excellent in all the earth, Lord, our Lord, is thy name. Hymn four. In the UK, we have a television program called The Sky at Night. For many years, it was presented by uh, the late Sir Patrick Moore. And obviously, as the title goes, it's about the, the, the stars and the planets and everything we can see in the sky at night. But here in a Bible reading from Psalm 8, David presents his own version of the sky at night. David whom we talked about with the children, who was um, anointed to be king. David wrote this psalm. He gives glory to the one who put everything in the night sky. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. Some years ago, I went on a, a charity trek in the Sahara Desert. And some nights, we decided to sleep out under the stars which I can thoroughly recommend. 
As we lay there on our sleeping bags, we looked directly up into the night sky, and it was just awesome. You could see so many stars. I'd never seen so many. You couldn't count them. They covered the whole sky. One of our number knew a little about the night sky. He wasn't exactly Sir Patrick Moore, but he was able to point out the different constellations to us and name them. It was just wonderful. In the middle of the desert, there were no cities or towns uh, or even villages around us, so there were no lights to prevent us from seeing the stars up above. I don't know if you've ever been in a planetarium when you see all these things. It was just like that, except it was even better because it was very real. When David was the shepherd boy, he would stay out in the fields with the sheep each night to look after them. He would look up and he would see the moon and the stars and he'd begin to think about the one who put them there. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I look at the heavens, your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. And in comparison, comparison to all of that, David himself feels so small, so ins insignificant, just as I did out in the desert. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, David writes, mortals that you care for them? God, how can you bother about me? I'm so tiny, I'm so insignificant compared to all this of your glory. I'm only one, we would say today, out of some seven billion people in the whole world. How can I possibly be important to you, Lord? Yet I am. We all are. You and me are special. God made me, God made each one of us, and He made us to be like Himself. Genesis 1 and verse 26, Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. God made you, and God made me, to be like Himself. Isn't that just incredible? Verse 5 says, You made us a little lower than yourself, you and I were made just one place below the Almighty God Himself. God is always God. He is our Creator. He is above all things. He's above you and me, and He always will be. But He chose to make you and me just a little lower than Himself. How wonderful that is. How good that makes us feel, especially if we're feeling a bit down. God has appointed you and me as rulers over all His creation. As we continue in Genesis 1, verses 27 and 28, so God created humankind in His image. In the image of God, He created them, male and female, He created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And so the Lord our God has given us tremendous authority over His creation. But with great authority comes great responsibility. If you have a pet, then you more or less have the authority to do with the pet what you want. But you also have the responsibility to feed and to care for that animal and not to abuse that authority. God has put us in charge of His creation. That's a huge honor, and when we think about it, a huge responsibility. And it's up to you and I to fulfill our responsibility and do the best that we can. We've been given a job to do by God Himself. He trusts us to do it, and we must re repay that trust by doing our absolute best. We must each pay our, play our part in looking after and caring for His creation. Remember the parable that Jesus told about three servants who were put in charge of their master's property when he went away. Each was given different talents of money according to their ability and told uh, to do what they could with what they had been given. One was given five talents and he made five more. One was given three talents and he made three more. 
or two talents, and he made two more, sorry. One was given one talent, and he buried it in the ground. When the master returned, he asked them what they had done with what they had been given. The first two were commended, well done, good and faithful servants. You have been faithful in small things. Now you will get, be given the opportunity to be faithful in big things. Come on in and share in my happiness. But the one man who produced, proudly produced his buried talent was soundly rebuked by his master. Why didn't you take the money and put it in the bank and earn interest on it? Those were in the days when interest was worth earning. Take the money away from him and give it to the one who has the ten. As for this useless servant, throw him outside into the darkness. There he will cry and grind his teeth. So God has given responsibilities to each one of us, to you and to me, according to our individual abilities. And it's up to us what we do with those responsibilities. And we will be rewarded by how well we use what God has given to us. This is an amazing psalm, the majesty of God, the wonders of His creation, and the honor that He gives to each one of us. But there is much, much more in this psalm. Jesus Himself quoted part of this psalm in our first reading from Matthew 21. When the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing miracles that Jesus had been doing and heard the children crying in the temple, Hosanna to the King of David, they became very angry. Do you hear what these children are saying, they said to Jesus? Yes, Jesus replied. Have you never read? Out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself. By saying these words, Jesus was telling these chief priests and scribes that He Himself was God, because the verse refers to God. It was to Him that the praise was given, and so it was right for the children to praise Jesus as they were doing, because He was worthy and is worthy of our praise. Praise Him, praise Him, all ye little children. He is love, He is love. Praise Him, praise Him, all ye little children. He is love. Come, children, join to sing, Alleluia, Amen. Loud praise to Christ our King, Alleluia, Amen. Jesus is worthy of all our praise, no matter what age we might be. Thou art worthy, thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, glory and honor, glory and honor and praise. The writer to the Hebrews takes up this psalm, and verses from the psalm, and develops them to tell us how these verses find their fulfillment in Jesus, in Jesus, the perfect man. It is Jesus who was for a time made a little lower than God. It is Jesus who is crowned with glory and honor. It is Jesus who has been appointed ruler over everything that He has made. As Paul reminds us in the second chapter of Philippians, Jesus became a human being. He came down to our level. He obeyed God completely, even though it led to His death, an extremely painful death on a cross. But because of all of this, God lifted Him up to the highest place and gave Him the name that is above all names, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Jesus was crowned with glory and honor because of all that He did for you and for me, humbling Himself, becoming one of us, taking all our sins upon Himself, suffering the consequences of those sins, which was death. All of that He did for you and for me. And that's what we all need to recognize. That's what we all need to admit to ourselves. He did all of that for me as an individual. And because of what He did for us, if we believe in Him and in what He has done, we too 
will be glorified. We too will be glorified. We too will be lifted up into God's almighty presence. We too will be able to enjoy Him forever. This is indeed a wonderful psalm. There is so much in it, but it is completed, it is perfected, it is fulfilled only in Jesus Christ. And that's the same for you and for me. We are completed, we are perfected, we are fulfilled only by Jesus Christ. We are completed as human beings only in Him. Only when we believe in Jesus as the Son of God, only when we believe that He died for us, for our sins in our place, to bring us back to God. Only when we believe that He rose from the dead so that we too might have life eternal. Only then do we become what God, our Creator, wanted us to be when He made us in His own likeness, when He made us just a little lower than Himself. In Christ, we become God's sons and daughters. In Christ, we become heirs of God the Father. In Christ, we become joint heirs with God the Son. All that is His is ours. We inherit it all. Not because we deserve it, because we don't, but because Christ has made it all possible for us. That's why Jesus cried out from the cross, it is accomplished. He had done it all for us. It is grace. Sometimes people explain grace as taking the letters G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. So, as we look back on this psalm, from the seeming irrelevance of ourselves, of man and woman, in relation to the great vastness of His universe, from the seeming insignificance of you and I just being one of some seven billion people in the world, because of Jesus, we are lifted high. Because of Jesus, we are lifted up into the very presence of God Himself. Because of Jesus, we shall reign with Him forever and ever. To him that overcometh, a crown of life shall be. He with the King of glory shall reign eternally. Shall we pray? Father God, we can look at your creation. We can look at the, the sun and the moon and the stars and see that you have put everything in place. And we thank you for your creation. Help us to be good stewards of your creation. And Lord, we thank you that you made us just a little lower than yourself. We thank you that we are completed and fulfilled only in Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you did for us, becoming one of us, living as one of us, knowing joys and sorrows and heartache and pain coming through all of that, dying on the cross for us, for our sins, to pay the price for our sins, and being raised to life so that we too might enjoy life eternal. Lord God, help us to focus on these things now in the silence. Lord God, we bring our prayers in Jesus' wonderful and powerful name. Amen. Behold the amazing gift of love the Father hath bestowed on us in calling us His own 
the children of our God. We sing together hymn 478. 478. <laughs> Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord God, we come now to pray for others, for those that you bring to our minds at this time. Lord, we pray for those who are ill at this time, perhaps in their own homes or in hospital. We pray that they would know that we are remembering them in prayer and that you are right there beside them. We pray for those that are facing operations and are worried. Lord, reassure them that once again you will always be with them. We pray for those who are concerned about tests that they have undergone at hospital or in the doctor's surgery. We pray that they would know your peace, your comfort, and your strength. Lord God, we pray for those who have been bereaved, who have lost a family member or a friend. Lord God, bring them your comfort. Comfort those who mourn. We pray especially for those two mothers and children who lost their lives in the car crash near Rosendale. Draw close to them, Lord and to others who mourn at this time. Lord God, it is good to know that others are praying for us. May we pray for those that you bring to our minds. May we pray for those sitting alongside us in the pews today, those that we know and those that we don't know. Lord, you know our concerns. You know what affects us. You know what we're worried about. Help us through these times, to know your strength, your peace, and your comfort, and bless us with your presence. And Lord, as we look further afield, we continue to pray for the land of Pakistan, a third of which has been underwater because of the recent floods. 
and millions of people have been displaced. Lord, we pray for restoration to that land. We pray for those that have lost their homes and loved ones also. Lord, may they know that you are with them through this time, even though it is very, very difficult. Lord, we continue to pray for those in the land of Sri Lanka with all its political ups and downs. We pray for our brothers and sisters in the church there at this time. May they rejoice in your presence as they worship on this day. And Lord, for those that were lost their lives in the attacks in Somalia, with the continuing problems from the rebels there, Lord, it's difficult for us to know how they feel. But you know how they feel, and you know how best to help them. You grieve along with them and alongside them. May they know that. And Lord God, just bring to our minds at this time those that we should remember before you in the silence. Lord God, how good it is to pray for our brothers and sisters, those that we know and those that we don't know. We bring all our prayers before you. In Jesus' name, amen. And now our offering for God's work will be taken up. Shall we pray? 
Lord God, how good it is to be in your house today to sing our songs and psalms of praise to you. How good it is to give you our offerings, to be used for your church, for this church and churches far beyond here, to be used for your glory and for the building up of your kingdom. Receive our gifts with our grateful thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'll invite the elders to join me for the communion. Please be seated. This is the communion part of our service. Please feel free to take the bread and the wine. This table is open to all who love the Lord Jesus Christ. There is gluten-free bread, as was announced earlier, and put your hands up if you'd like some alcohol free when the, the wine uh, goes out. There are uh, words in bold on your um, order of service um, to, to repeat. There's also the uh, Apostles' Creed, uh, and the sanctus to come at the appropriate times. Brothers and sisters, this is a joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south, and sit together at the table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior Jesus invites all who love and trust Him to share in this feast that he has prepared for us. Let us stand and affirm our faith by saying together the words of the Apostles' Creed in 628. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in His name. We share His peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Lord God, you have formed the universe in your wisdom. You have created all things by your power. You have formed us in families on the earth to live and to serve you in faith. Lord, we praise you for these gifts of bread and wine. 
and for your table spread for all who love you. Set these gifts apart from their ordinary use to this holy and sacred use, so that as we eat this bread and drink this wine, they may remind us of the body of Christ broken for us and the blood of Christ shed for us as a sign of your love for all your people, as together with earth and sea and sky and all the heavenly host, we join in singing. be seated. Mm. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that in your Son, Jesus Christ, your Word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth, who lived as one of us, knowing all our joys and sorrows, who healed the sick who fed the hungry, who opened the eyes of the blind, who broke bread with outcasts and sinners, who died on the cross for each one of us, giving himself for the life of the world, and who was raised to life, winning victory over sin and death and the devil. Lord God, we praise you that Christ now reigns with you in heaven and will come again to make all things new. Lord God, we thank you that we are your body on earth, loving and caring in the world. Lord God, we give you our thanks that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and after giving thanks to you, Jesus broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this to remember me. Body of Christ broken. Body of Christ.
In the same way, after the supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, this cup is the new relationship with God, sealed by my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do so to remember me. This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. This is the blood of Christ which was shed for you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good.
The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for all that we have received from you in this sacrament today. You have united us with Christ. You have reminded us of his great sacrifice for each one of us. You have given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal kingdom. Send us out from here, Lord, in the power of your Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and your glory for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory, thou or death has won. Let's conclude our worship. Hymn 400. And the nineteen. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore.